So understanding that first impression goes a long way. And why are we going on and on about network? Because these weak ties matter. Yeah. And you know we love science here. In the 1960s, Mark Granovetter, back then he was a PhD student at Harvard, set out to look at just this. And in his study, he has 282 men, how they found their current job, and he tracked how they heard about the position, who asked them for referrals, how they got the interview, and just in general, who is helping them land the job. In his paper, The Strength of Weak Ties, published in 1973, he found that when it came to finding a job, a person's friends were eager to help and strangers were not. Well, duh, yep. no surprise there. Nope. But the surprise was that casual acquaintances mm -hmm. called weak ties were also very likely to offer a helping hand. And exactly because they were not a close connection, they knew of a lot of job openings that the survey participants would have otherwise never heard of. Yes. So having a heterogeneous network of people, a diverse group that can offer new opportunities. But let's talk about the other side of this, Johnny. New perspectives. Yes. I know for a lot of us, when we see a problem, we have our angle at it, our low resolution view. Mm -hmm. And our friends tend to have the same view. That's why we get along. We have the same temperament. We enjoy Certainly. the same things. But guess what? That problem could be pretty tough to handle if all you have is one or three or four very similar perspectives. Mm -hmm. What happens when we have a large diverse network? Well, with, with a large diverse network, you have different perspectives because people have had different experiences than you have. They've learned from different places and they're bringing all that to the table. And by looking at a problem from many different angles now the low resolution becomes high resolution and you're able to find your way through that problem because you get more information and, and the thing about it also is if you're looking at it from yourself from your own perspective not only are you getting a one angle low resolution view of it it is low resolution because it is distorted by your own emotions because it is your problem. And so you're stuck dealing with it and, and with everything that comes with it, because it is a problem with like frustration. Right. And when other people are able now to look at it, they're not distorted with emotion they're, They have a different experience and a different perspective and it helps you put a better picture together. Yeah, for example, and, and I always harp on this because so many of us, when we think about building our network, we only think about the people ahead of us. I just want that super smart person in my network, or I just want that influential person in my network. We don't often think about, we wanna build a network with people who are just starting, we, who are at our level, and who are ahead of us, because each of those perspectives is important. Mm -hmm. And we have a YouTube channel, we're yes. trying to grow it. The Art of Charm TV, you can check it out. You can watch us on the podcast here. And in trying to grow this YouTube channel, I've had a few different perspectives. I've had my own frustrations with trying to get views, yep. trying to get subscribers. Talk to some friends who actually have more successful channels. They clued me in on something that's more important. Watch time, mm -hmm. right? Not knowing these things, I would have never realized that that's important, right? I'm looking at the problem from my viewpoint of, I want more views. How sure. can I get more views, right? That seems to be important. Mm -hmm. People who are ahead of us know, well, watch time is what matters, not the number of views as much as we'd like it to think. Then I started talking to a buddy who just started his YouTube channel. And he was telling me all these little things that he's done to get some action moving. And that perspective is also just as helpful. A lot of times when we only focus on the perspectives of the people who are ahead of us, we miss out on the opportunities for the, the people who are just starting out. They're hungry, they're solving problems, they're trying to come at it from a different angle, they're hacking things together. And all three of those perspectives are very helpful to your success. It's not just about finding the mentor. Right. And understanding that a lot of times when we look past the people who are just starting out, guess what, sometimes they're gonna zip past you. Sometimes they're gonna open new doors that you didn't know were imaginable. But if you look down on them, you're like, oh, he just graduated from mm -hmm. school. Oh, he's not in the same uh, field as me. He's not in the same industry. Why do I need to get to know him? We miss out on these opportunities. Well, like anything, once you put yourself in a mode to chase, things run away. And if things are running away, then they're gonna be difficult for you to capture. However, while you're chasing these other people, 
These other folks are working on the problem. They're growing their thing. They're concentrating on what they're doing. And guess what? Because they've done that, the people you're chasing notice the people who are working on their thing. And so they're getting that mentorship. They're getting that time that you are so desperately looking for that you could have had if you had been working on your own thing rather than chasing this these people around. If you don't take the long game perspective yes. of this, if you don't look at this as something that you're building your entire lifetime and something that will add value at some future date that you're not even thinking about, then it's that short-sighted viewpoint that actually makes you a taker. It doesn't allow you to build the social capital necessary to have that network. And these diverse perspectives are incredibly important. One of our previous guests, David Hensel, mm -hmm. good buddy of mine, mentored us. And you know he started a software as a service company, hosting uh, and CDN essentially. And we were having some talks about some difficulties I was having with the Art of Charm and, and getting the business on track with some lead generation. And he said, have you ever thought about live chat? And I was like, yeah, we played with it, but it didn't really work for us. And he's like, no, I, I think you should really look at live chat on mm -hmm. your website. So the people who are on the pages that are the most valuable to you, you start interacting with. Yeah. And I was like, ah, that probably just works for you. He's like, why don't you try it? What can it hurt? So went back, installed live chat, got some things going. That one thing paid off in spades over the history of this company. Mm -hmm. And that's, again, due to the fact that my network, I'm not saying, oh, are you a coach? Oh, you're not a coach? Get out of my network. Right. Oh, are you a multimillionaire? No, you're not. Get out of my network. I'm looking for diverse perspectives when I'm building my network because I know the value they add to me, not only when I'm having problems, but when I'm trying to grow things, when I'm getting excited about things as well. We also want to wrap this with some myths. Yes. Bust some misconceptions. Now let's take a look at three common misconceptions that many people have about networking. The first, we've touched on a little bit, is this whole idea of keeping score. 